So this is my 2018 13-inch MacBook Pro. And at the moment, I have a 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro as my main device. And I wanted to see if this thing can actually replace my 2017 15-inch model. So here's my full in-depth review of this thing and everything you need to know about this new MacBook. So yeah, grab some snacks, whatever you want to grab, because this is going to be an interesting, a fairly long but interesting video. And let's have a look if this 13-inch MacBook Pro 2018 is actually worth it. Okay, so Apple's MacBook Pros come in two sizes, a 15-inch as well as a 13-inch model. I have both of them, but in this video, I'll only be focusing on a 13-inch model. So this is the 2018 model. Uh, it came out about two weeks ago, and it actually starts from $1,800 or 1,750 pounds. So it's not a cheap 13-inch laptop. In fact, I believe this is literally the most expensive 13-inch laptop that you can buy baseline option. Now Apple does sell a more affordable version of the 13-inch MacBook. This one actually starts at $1,300 or £1,250, but that one does not come with a touch bar, it comes with a single fan, um, and that one was actually released in 2017, so that model was not updated, it's only this one with a touch bar that has been updated in 2018. So design-wise, the new 13-inch MacBook Pro looks identical to the 2017 and 2016 models. So we get the same colors as before, space gray and silver, Obviously, everyone would be getting the space gray because that one looks really, really good. We have the same massive trackpad. Even the weight has remained identical to last year's model. And I don't really blame Apple for doing that. I mean, this is an amazingly well-designed laptop. Definitely my favorite laptop design. It looks even better than the 15-inch model, which honestly looks just like an afterthought uh, with how much space, empty space you have between the touch bar and the screen. So the 13-inch form factor is definitely what Apple had in mind when they initially designed the 2016 MacBook Pro redesign. Now, the only thing that I would change design-wise would be the bezels, so I would love those to be thinner, but other than that, I love this design a lot. Now, there is one design change that has happened, and that is when it comes to the keyboard. So Apple has now introduced the third-generation butterfly mechanism, or you could even call it the fourth, because the 2017 models got a slight improvement from the 2016 ones, but basically Apple has now further refined the controversial keyboard that it got sued for quite a few times before, so they now added a plastic film to keep debris out of the key switch mechanism, basically in order to avoid the keys being stuck from, you know, particles of dust or breadcrumbs. But fun fact, Apple hasn't officially admitted uh, to this. So they've only said that it's quieter, which I mean it is, but not by a lot. Uh, the fact that the keyboard is quieter than the 2017 model is actually a result of that film which they added to fix the previous issues. But Apple just doesn't want to admit to this because, you know, they don't want to admit to a flaw and they don't want to get sued even further. But regardless, the keyboard on this thing is much, much better now. I can personally type easier on this, so there is a bit more key travel. Uh, the keys feel a bit more springier, a bit more rubbery. So similar to the pre-2016 MacBook Pros. So overall, the keyboard is a nice improvement, but what else? Well, we actually got quite a few small changes that Apple made with this new MacBook Pro 2018. So first off, we have the Apple T2 chip from the iMac Pro. So in case you don't know what this is, this is basically an Apple A10 processor. It's an Apple A10 base processor, which handles a lot of back background processes such as the camera, the microphone, uh, the boot sequence, the storage encryption. This one is actually pretty big because you no longer get the performance drop on the SSDs if you, uh, if you use encryption, if you use FireVault. So there's a lot of processes that a T2 chip handles uh, and it also supports the Hey Cindy command. Now I'm not going to say the name, but you know which one. So you can activate Siri from wherever you are in your room, just like a HomePod, just like you can do on the iPad Pros, on the iPhones. So this is the first on the Mac. And then you'll also notice some very small but very useful changes and improvements thanks to that T2 chip, such as, for example, the camera quality, the webcam quality is much better than before. Even though it's the same camera module, uh, the T2 uses the image processing that's actually being used in the iPhone 7 because the same chip uh, to handle this, and same applies to the microphones, so the sound quality is a bit better, and then the speakers, so you get better audio quality overall. And then, speaking of the speakers, Haha, uh -huh. see what I did there? Apple has uh, basically wired the speakers directly to the power rather than just the motherboard alone. So they're also a bit more powerful than the 2017 and the 2016 models. And aside from this, one of the other changes is the addition of a true tone display. So essentially there's a new sensor now uh, next to the camera and similar to the iPad Pros, the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8, the display would basically automatically adjust its color balance based on the lighting condition that you're in. So for example, if, if you're outside with a MacBook and it's sunny, the display would match that light color. Uh, if you're in an office and you have white light or, you know, blue lights like I do, it would actually match that, just like a piece of paper would. And then what's really interesting about this is that it also applies to the touch bar and 
If you have an LG Ultrafine 5K monitor connected like I do, it also applies to that, as long as, of course, you keep the MacBook lids open because that's where the sensor is. Now, the only problem with this is that, yes, it is much better on the eyes, but the problem is that Final Cut Pro 10, Photoshop, or any app for that matter, at the moment, it does not disable True Tone, which means that the colors would be completely off. So if you're doing any photo or video work, you would need to keep this feature disabled. And then there's also the addition of Bluetooth 5.0, which supports two times the data rate and four times the range when compared to Bluetooth 4.2. And then it also consumes less power than Bluetooth 4.2. So this is a very useful feature to have, but there's not a lot of Bluetooth 5.0 devices out there as of right now. So this is more of like a future proofing thing uh, to have for the new MacBooks. But then the biggest change in terms of this MacBook is actually when it comes to the performance. So this thing finally comes with a quad-core processor, which, fun fact, this was the main complaint that people had with a 13-inch model. The fact that it didn't come with a quad-core processor, only a dual-core one. But by the way, this is not thanks to Apple, but thanks to Intel. So Intel's 8th generation processors, uh, Coffee Lake, the Coffee Lake architecture focuses on adding more cores. So the dual-core chips now became quad-core processors. And the quad-core processors now became six-core processors. So essentially, the 15-inch MacBook Pros, they're now six cores all across the line. But with a 13-inch MacBook Pro with those four cores, even the baseline model, which comes with the uh, 2.3 gigahertz i5 processor, which I have right here, it's faster than the top-of-the-line MacBook Pro 15-inch from 2017. Uh, which is insane. Now you can finally have the same performance on a 13-inch model as you could on the 15-inch model uh, up until 2017, including 2017, except one thing, and that is the GPU. So the 13-inch model still does not come with a dedicated graphics card, which means that if you plan on doing, you know, video editing, 3D modeling, or anything that requires a high-performance GPU, gaming, for example, I mean, let's be honest, you won't be gaming on a Mac. Uh, video on that soon. But yeah, basically, if you care about a GPU, then you know, this is going to be much, much slower than the 15-inch model. So, for example, Final Cut Pro 10 takes three times more to render the same project on the 2018 13-inch model when compared to the 2015-2017 model, not even the 2018 one. So, for example, if your export takes, I don't know, 20 minutes on the 15-inch model, it's going to take an hour on a 13-inch. And if you're doing that daily, well... That's a huge difference, and then in that case, the 13-inch MacBook Pro isn't for you. Mm, fun fact. Uh, did you know that the 2018 13-inch MacBook Pros, they now support the full 40 gigabit per second Thunderbolt 3 bandwidth on all four Thunderbolt 3 ports? Because before in the 2017 models and 2016, it was only on the two left-hand side ports, uh, not all four of them. So this means that you can transfer data at insanely, insanely fast speeds, basically up to 2.8 gigabytes per second, which is the actually the bottleneck, not in Thunderbolt 3, but in the internal storage, the write speed of these new MacBooks, but that's basically the fastest you can get in any laptop as of right now. But these ports are awesome, not just because of the fast transfer speeds, but you can also connect this to one 5K monitor. So the 15-inch MacBook Pros, they can do two 5K monitors. So if you care about connecting more monitors, then get a 15-inch. Then you can also connect an eGPU or external graphics card to this thing and basically get that GPU performance you never had on the 13-inch model. By the way, I actually did an in-depth review of Apple's Blackmagic eGPU, so do watch that video if you want to know more about that, uh, how it works and everything. But right now, eGPU support is very limited in macOS, so for example, Final Cut Pro doesn't support it officially. Now, you can in fact enable, uh, you know, support via a third-party script, so you can, you can run the script and with Radeon Pro 580, that's the, the graphics card that you get in the Apple Blackmagic eGPU, you would actually be getting worse performance than on a 15-inch MacBook Pro with a weaker dedicated GPU. So yeah, at the moment, that's the state of eGPU on a Mac. But again, do watch this video if you want to know more about that. Okay, so in the end, what's my conclusion on all this? Is the 13-inch 2018 MacBook Pro worth it or not? Well, if you don't need the GPU performance, then I would say yes. It's a great all-around device. It literally has the most powerful CPU on a 13-inch laptop. That's this thing. Uh, but if you need some extra GPU performance, you know, you could buy an eGPU. But at the same time, you could get the baseline 15-inch model, which only costs only $600 more, which is cheaper than the eGPU option. But that would give you way better performance overall, uh, CPU-wise, GPU-wise, especially when it comes to the GPU. And keep in mind that on a 15-inch model, you would have the dedicated GPU all the time wherever you go. I mean, yeah, it's not as portable as the 13-inch model, but you, you do get much more performance out of it. And speaking of the portability, yes, I would pick the 13-inch over the 15-inch every single day, um, even over the 12-inch, by the way. I feel like the 13-inch is the perfect blend between portability and performance. But again, if you want to do some heavy, heavy lifting, you know, not actual heavy lifting, but basically have some heavy computing work, 
uh, on that on that MacBook, well, I would say go with a 15-inch model because you get six cores on the baseline option. You get 16 gigabytes of RAM versus eight, or also faster memory, so 2400 megahertz versus 2133. Uh, as well as dedicated GPU, and that would make a huge difference in your workflow. But yeah, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about all this. What do you guys think of the 2018 13-inch MacBook Pro? And would you pick this over the 15-inch model? Do you need performance or do you need portability? Or, you know, maybe you need something that's even more portable than the 13 and you could go with the 12 And So let me know what do you guys think on all this if you already own one. Uh, my plan was actually to get a 13-inch 2018 and replace my... Uh, old 2017 15 inch but yeah i'm not doing that anymore i got a 15 inch i9 and i'll be doing a review full in-depth review of that pretty soon until then you can check out my i9 in the performance test and comparison uh, with the i7 and everything you need to know about that thermal throttling tests uh, modeling 3d mo rendering and so on on the i9 if you want to know more about that um but yeah definitely subscribe if you want to see more in-depth reviews like this one and in the videos enable notifications by tapping on that bell icon join the notification squad be a cool kid Cool, let's get in the block on the block and join the notification squad. But yeah, other than that, thank you for watching. If you're looking like, if you've enjoyed it, let me know. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Set up deck, signing out. Cheers.